Well, hello there, students and family and teachers and people who subscribe to our YouTube channel. We made it to the end of the year. Uh, we got through it. I'd like to thank all the students for their hard work and the teachers for their hard work and especially the parents who suddenly found themselves becoming teachers. I just wanted to wrap up the year here and share some information. Uh, report cards. We're finalizing the report cards and as soon as they're they're done I'll put them in an envelope. I'll mail them off to everybody. We've uh, we're quickly approaching that absolute deadline for Ed Choice and we have uh, all of our applications sent into the State Department. Missing just a couple of little things, but we'll we'll uh, we'll track those down uh, as the state requires them. So that's it. That's in the works. But if you've been paying attention, you. Uh, you know that Governor DeWine has got a tough go of it right now in balancing the state budget. And it looks like education is going to take about a $200 million hit here in the state of Ohio. And that will trickle down to us. We will be affected by it. You know, we've already received some notifications of funding cuts. But at the same time, the federal government has put into place the CARES Act. And next week on Tuesday, I'll have a meeting and we'll see what kind of results come from that as far as some additional funding that might be available to the school to help us transition into our next school year. We've got seven, seven kids who work their way through kindergarten this year and we'd like to have a little graduation ceremony for those seven students. Miss Romeo uh, will be gathering up gowns and caps and tassels and diplomas and on Saturday, Saturday afternoon, uh, she plans to come to each one of the kindergarten students, the K-1 and K-2 kids, and give you an opportunity to have a photo photo moment with your child. I'll also be uploading a video where I conduct a little ceremony here at the school presenting those diplomas. So look for that. Look for some information coming from uh, Miss Romeo and I'll be sure and send a message out to all the parents as well to let them know. I believe uh, she wants to do that Saturday afternoon, I believe between noon and two o'clock. But look for that, look for that updated information from Miss Romeo. I imagine, just like every day it's on the forefront of my thoughts, and that is you know, right now, schools are closed, and even churches and mosques uh, are, are closed. Uh, and the reason being is when people gather together in, in a congregation, uh, things like colds and flus and this COVID-19 spread pretty readily. The thing about the COVID-19 is people can be infected and not have any symptoms. And that's really been problematic for the people who put together you know, the different protocols uh, to help protect people. Because you just don't know sometimes who may be infected and who is capable of passing on the virus. And so when the CDC and the, the Department of Education and the state government are trying to imagine what we're going to do in August, you know, the simple solution would be if there's an antivirus, if we could all just go get a shot and feel safe, 
and be able to return to normal, uh, it's not likely that's going to happen by August. So people are in a quandary right now. The CDC has released some guidelines, but <clears throat> uh, nothing from the state yet. Uh, nothing from the Department of Education specifically addressing what and how schools, if they do open in August. Now, if we don't open, we, we will have a whole different format of online learning that will be presented to the students. Be much, much different than what we had to do at the spur of the moment this year uh, when we were all surprised by the shutdown of the schools. If we do open, I think it's probably pretty safe to imagine that the safeguards that will be in place will include, you know, the social distancing, we'll be spreading the kids out a little further apart. But, you know, kids are kids, and kids don't necessarily understand uh, what it means to socially distance yourself or to not uh, share your pencils or your crayons or your glue bottles. You know, uh, the kids are just, they're going to interact. Plus, we have to protect the teachers. And... You know, you can't have a school if the teachers are all out sick because the children have come to school and passed the virus along. Or even the teachers come to school and pass the virus along. You know, this is just such an amazing dilemma right now. But if we do open in the fall, one of the things that you can probably start doing that I'm pretty sure will be in place will be uh, masks. Uh, and the, the the reason behind the masks is that they protect others around the person wearing the mask. So the person wearing the mask can sneeze or cough, and those particulate droplets that can transmit the virus are captured by and large inside the mask. So I'm going to imagine everyone's going to be wearing masks. And I almost see schools turning into the same kind of environment as a hospital would be, where the staff is protecting themselves because they have to be able to work with all of the rest of the people coming into the school. So things like wearing face shields, uh, possibly gloves, face masks for sure, uh, being armed with a thermometer to uh, monitor everybody's temperatures. I think those are going to be pretty much commonplace in schools. And it's interesting to watch how technology has been evolving and, and the kind of things and inventions that are coming forth in the marketplace to uh, take care of those needs. So we'll 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 see what it's going to mean, uh, and of course, we'll keep everybody posted. As soon as information comes to us, I'll be sure and get it to you. That's pretty much all I have for the updates here. We've uh, we've done a little bit of improvement at the mosque. You'll notice if you come by new sidewalks. Uh, we've installed new sidewalks to the women's entrance into the mosque and at the front door entrance uh, to help make it easier for people to get in and out. Uh, was a fun project. Other than that, uh, you know, there's been some donations of carpeting uh, that came into the mosque, and I'm not quite sure yet where those will be utilized, but uh, the mosque is still closed, obviously, because of the protection of not wanting to infect everybody, and I know that we'll be approaching the end of Ramadan here soon, and you'll be thinking about Eid and, and celebrating that within your faith. I'm not sure what that's going to mean or how that's going to take place. But uh, the main thing is right now, the virus is still there. It's still out there. 
it's uh, for those people who have had to endure it in its worst state uh, and survived understands how brutal it is and unfortunately you know many have passed as a result of uh, contracting this virus so staying safe is the highest priority amongst yourself your families and uh, all of your friends so on that note let me just end this update for you we'll keep you posted again and look for kindergartners look for that little graduation ceremony here at this school where I put up a video and celebrate your success for the kindergartners that's it for now stay safe take care of yourselves and be kind